it makes me want to hide under my porch. I mean, really. It's been a wild week again. We've had a couple years of this, haven't we? What all has happened this week? There's been some interesting developments. Uh, Bill Cosby was found guilty um, after 50, 50 women, or 60 women, no, 60 women over a 50 year period um, had accused him. Not sure how to feel about that. Um, <laughs> um, that was one thing. We had the South Korean and the North Korean leaders meeting for the first time in how many years? Anyone know? 50 years at least? Yeah, 50 seems to be the year. Um, yeah, 50 years. It still scares me. <laughs> um, what's going to happen there? What has happened this week? The what? Oh, there was one baby in the UK that was um, suffering from a long, like a terminal illness. He died. Oh. And then um, they came and uh, what's Louis. His name? William Louis tried to <laughs> Oh, yes, the new baby. Okay. Oh, I did not know about the See, sometimes there's so much news, it's hard to digest it all. So, baby died. Oh, terminal illness. And then a new baby was born to um, the prince and. <coughs> The Duchess of some other, something, Kent or something? Yeah. Cambridge. Cambridge. Cambridge, sorry. And then there was a death in San Francisco of the founder of Burning Man. Oh, oh wow. I did not hear that. Years old. My, well, <coughs> yesterday the death was the death of Dr. James Cone. Yes. If you are familiar with him, um, if you're not familiar with him, he was uh, a prophet in our midst. <coughs> really shaped a couple of generations of minds, especially those of us coming up in seminary during those years, um, to, to look at scripture and to look at uh, the story of Jesus and the theology of uh, God and Christ um, in a more liberative way for folks who are oppressed. And so because of his words, um, it's almost impossible for those of us who've grown up with his wisdom in our lives to separate Christianity from any kind of liberta liberative um, action, that Christ came to liberate us from all that oppresses us, liberate us from death, and liberate us from the oppression that many folks um, live under, especially people of color, especially African Americans in this country. So he passed away yesterday, and I felt, it felt like a moment, a really significant moment um, uh, for me and for a lot of us who studied um, his works. Um, anything else happened this week that kind of, no? Yes. That's right, Macron. Um, he came and uh, visited, yes, the French, um, President? I'm not sure what Yeah, President. Um, yeah, that seems like that was for at least a month ago. But yes, that's how the week has been. So there's so much going on, and there's much going on in many of our personal lives as well um, that it just feels a bit overwhelming. Um, it just feels a bit overwhelming that we are um, kind of how do we deal with all of this? How do we process this information? How do we feel anything other than overwhelmed and often paralyzed? What can I do? How can I do anything? I was, um, one of the news items this week what, um, is that in Alabama, there was uh, the opening of lynching museum, a lynching memorial, and um, I watched a couple of news uh, programs on that, and um, I felt like I couldn't breathe when I saw it. And it, it's, it, I'm glad the story is being told, but it's too, too, too overwhelming. So that brings us to our scripture this morning. And you're like, Tammy, please, what are you about to say to us? This story, this story gives me hope. Let's, let's look at this story to 
together. So Philip, now we know that it was Philip who was um, one of the disciples, right? We've heard about him. Well, this is not that Philip. It's a little confusing, but this is an ordinary kind of person, Philip. This is Philip who was a diaconate, which in um, the early, early formation of the church, there were people that were called to serve others. They were called to uh, put out a feast. They were called to uh, take uh, communion to others. They were called to do a lot of the dirty work, basically, um, of the church. The apostles were uh, kind of ordained to preach and go out and spread the news. But the diaconate were the people who really got things done. In our modern day church, they're the people who make sure the lights turn on, that our checkbook balances, that uh, the windows get washed, which they have been, aren't they beautiful? They're the people who uh, bring food in every time we meet so you can have a little bit of something to go away with in your belly. They're the people who make sure that the way is prepared for everybody else. They're the servants. They're the people behind the scenes. They rarely are people that you are going to see up in front of folks, and they rarely get big thank yous. That's who Philip was. So right before this scripture, we if you read a little bit before, which is always important, this is a really important way to kind of uh, encounter scripture, is look what's before and what's after. That'll help you understand where the author was going. Because this, this wasn't dictated, right? We're all clear on that, right? That God didn't just say, okay, this, write that now, write that now, write that now. But that these are people's memories, these are the stories that were told over and over again, and the order in which they're told and the way in which they're told and the things that are said and the things that are unsaid are very important how we understand what we're reading. So, this would, story would have been told right after they tell about Saul. Anyone remember who Saul becomes? Paul, thank you. See, I need help. I, I like help. I like help. So, so Saul becomes Paul. He becomes Paul a little further down the road. Okay? So Saul is uh, just, he has anger issues. I'll, I'll, I'll diagnose him with that. He has anger issues. He's got some issues. So he is now going into people's homes. He finds out they're Christians and he's pulling them out. He is putting people in jail. He is having people whipped. He is having people, their business is disrupted. All their life is being disrupted. They're being persecuted, really persecuted. This might be a here. They are being persecuted. And they, they are hiding out in places, trying their best to lay low because he is acting on behalf of the religious establishment. He is their guy, going out and making sure that they cut this problem out at the root. So meanwhile, we've got Philip. And Philip, who is a diaconate, just an ordinary person, he is just standing there and he's, and all of a sudden, an angel of the Lord. Now, I'm sorry, but I haven't had many angels just show up for me. But can you imagine? That would be a tremendous experience. So an angel of the Lord says to him, Go. Go from Jerusalem to Gaza. Jerusalem to Gaza. Gaza sound familiar? Anyone? No. Yes. Go to Jerusalem to Gaza and take this road, this particular road going south. Well, I love that the scripture says, oh, by the way, for those of us, that's a wilderness road. That's where nobody wants to go. That's where it's a little scary to go at night by yourself. Like, I don't know about you, but the five, there's a part of the five that there's just miles and miles and miles of nothing. 
and not any gas stations or not any place to eat or that's kind of what this was. This is just a place to get you from here to there. And the in-between part was just a lot of nothing. 